Okay, I know. I know what you're thinking. I said no more new machines. But this one, this one's different. It's really special. Today we are exploring the potential of the Fiber Seeker 3 and its continuous fiber 3D printing. Okay, we're powering it on for the first time. It uses a technology only available now to consumers that uses two different nozzles. One that pushes a continuous strand of carbon fiber through a melted section of normal plastic and then combines that with the plastic printed from the second nozzle, which is just normally 3D printed. This method of combining continuous fibers with plastic can create incredibly strong results when used properly. This machine is about to launch on Kickstarter and I really don't like throwing the word game changer around often, but this one kind of feels like it, at least for me and my experiences so far. So let's dive into it and see what makes this machine so special. FiberSeek did give me early access and this printer in exchange for this video. Let's start with the body because it's large. It comes with a 300 by 300 by 245 millimeter build plate and it comes in at about 24 by 24, but with the spools on the back 26 inches and then about 22 inches tall. Pretty large footprint, mainly because it has a dual nozzle design with three separate feeding tubes and a heated chamber. The dual nozzle design is very unique, with the right nozzle being a normal 0.4 millimeter nozzle and the left nozzle having an extra wide heated chamber. In this heated chamber, a 1.75 millimeter line of filament is pushed in, bringing it to temperature while the continuous fiber is brought from above where it goes past the cutter, a gap for clearing clogs, a precision section that lines it up just right and then it pops down below into the heated chamber where it's combined with the plastic and turned into a coated fiber that the printer smushes into the print using a wide 0.7 millimeter nozzle. It's really unlike anything I've seen before and this is where the magic happens. The continuous fibers are being sold at $49.99 for 500 meters right now. And depending on how much fiber you plan to use, that 500 meters can last a really long time. Or you could print it with solid settings and it'll go very quickly, but for the majority of prints, that's complete overkill. Speaking of overkill, theoretically, this machine will work with any type of filament and they have added in a few other features that make this machine a serious contender for advanced engineering filaments by including a heated chamber capable of going up to 65 degrees Celsius. That may not be as high as some filaments like, but it will definitely help with part warping on ABS and nylon, which is nice because this printer definitely excels at printing large parts. The nozzles are hardened steel and can go up to 350 degrees, while the heated bed goes up to 110. When it prints with the standard FDM nozzle, it's actually really quick at 500 millimeters per second max, which is nice because the fused carbon is not fast. It seems to speed up on the straights, but it's quite slow going around corners. So the more infill you use, the slower it's going to go. Thankfully, it comes with an integrated camera so you can babysit the printer while you're on the go or in another room without having to worry. Okay, so it's got some cool tech specs, but what's the deal with this continuous carbon fiber? Because that's what makes this printer special and unique, right? When used to its maximum potential, it has a strength of 900 megapascals. This is because carbon fiber has immense tensile strength. Now I have no way to test that, so here are a few of the tests that they've done with these types of prints. Now something to clarify right away is that you're not going to improve your Z seam strength, so layers up and down. If you're pulling that way, you're not going to see major improvements. Where you really get the improvements is in the XY, so that way, this way, all around, so here, here, and even on the twist. It's just if you were to pull this way, you wouldn't see a lot of strength that way. That's not really what this is used for. The X and Y though, when you're using these in the right way, can make the prints insanely strong. Learning how to play into that tensile strength is thankfully a really short learning curve if you have experience using slicers for 3D printing. However, there's a lot of experimentation needed to find out what is the best combination of fiber settings. You can have none and use the printer for standard printing, or you can scale up the carbon fibers that are infused by adding more outer and inner reinforced perimeters, as well as reinforced infill. 
all the way up to solid infill, which will use the maximum amount of fiber possible for the geometry of the model. I had a call with the FiberSeq team and they advised me that using 30% isogrid reinforced infill is the sweet spot between strength and not using unnecessary amounts of fiber. The software is based on Clipper and I'm actually pretty impressed with the amount of development already in place. Considering that it's not available to the public yet, I've been told that they will be launching a newer version when they are finished the Kickstarter with a more refined set of features. And I'll share some of the issues I had later on in this video. It looks like there will be no restrictions with the type of filament or fibers that you can use as it's an open system, unlike the MarkForge, which is its closest competition. Poking around in the software, I also see that glass fibers are likely coming very soon. So let's dive in to some of the prints I was able to get done during the short amount of time I had with this printer. I pretty much exclusively printed with the transparent Petchy that they provided because it's really neat to be able to see the carbon fiber through the print. And I think that would be interesting for you guys to see. So I'll probably end up reprinting some of these in uh, a stronger, more durable material. But for now, I think it's cool to be able to see the fibers through the print. First up, we have a simple set of prop guards for my friend's FPV drone. I went with a simple bit of external fiber perimeters so that they can take a hit without cracking. We'll see how the results turn out once he actually starts flying it. I designed this rounded GoPro extension arm so that I can mount my FPV goggles to my construction helmet. When I'm on set on construction sites, it tends to get thrown around, so I needed something to be really strong so I won't damage anything. The carbon fiber actually made its way into the rounded rings, which gives me a lot of confidence that even if they twist and crack or anything happens, the tensile strength of the carbon will hold them in place. That way nothing can fall and nothing can break. I also made the like standard little stick thingy that you can try really hard to break, but it won't. And then I made a quick release plate so that I can mount a camera on it and just see how stable it is. But the thing that I'm really impressed by is there's like no flex. It's extremely stiff. So this actually has unlocked a product of mine that I've been wanting to make for a long time that I couldn't because plastic wasn't stiff enough and it was too complex for my CNC without having to flip it four different, five different ways. So I'm really excited about this one. This product is a lens collar so that you can move the center of gravity forward, but specifically for this lens, I use it on a gimbal a lot. So you'll be able to leave this heavy lens mounted with the focus motor on the actual lens and then take your camera body off, switch it, go use a wide angle, go handheld, do whatever you want to. So that's the idea, at least. I've been using it a ton with a prototype, but unfortunately, all of the plastic versions I've made end up just with a little bit of shake, a little bit of jitter that I just can't get rid of. And I've, I, you can watch it happen when it's mounted. It's just not strong, it's not stiff enough. That's exactly what it needs to be, stiff, and it's not stiff enough. So I think the Fiber Seeker 3 is the perfect use case for this type of product. So my first time printing it, there was a little bit of adhesion problem and this tiny piece on the back came loose. So it's no good for a prototype, but that means we get to break it. So we're gonna head over to Kamal's, show him the robot arm that I made, and we're gonna try and break it. He is creating these robot arm learning projects for schools and providing them with a 3D printer to make all the parts with. It's a really cool program, but all of the testing is showing that the main long arm can't hold all of the other parts and motors up reliably when made out of standard plastics. That is insanely light, man. What the heck? And like, give it a good, like try and break it. Really? Yeah. Actually? Like first feel it, but. Oh. Right? It doesn't flex. It doesn't flex at all. I put it up against my knee? Yeah. Really? I mean, I'll print another one of it breaks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I created a crack though. That's beautiful. I love, I love this. I feel like I'm holding a piece of the future. Right? Feels like it. This way, zero flex. Zero. <laughs> and that's the way we'll actually be using it. Yeah, that's not going anywhere. That's insane. Insane. So that solves the problem you had, hey? Yeah, big time. Having aluminum, everyone has aluminum, but not everyone has carbon fiber. Wait, is it like this? Other way, yeah. Oh, baby. Yeah, right, it's neat. Very, very neat, man. 
nice. That's so, so cool. I love the infill, how it shows through too. Yeah, you can try. Let's try break it. How? In which direction? I mean, I think pull it apart. Pull it apart? Yeah. Okay, tell me when. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> no. <laughs> Ah, no, I can't even do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shoot, I thought it'd break. No, that's not coming. Off. And that's only right at the end. That's only a 2.3 millimeter wall. No, oh that's my. not even thick. I feel like I'm. What the? Heck? <laughs> oh, I thought it was gonna break. Hold on. Oh, you're doing it, yeah. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Oh, no. It won't break. It won't break. Oh, I think I just pulled my shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hold on. No, this will break. I need to leverage it against something. <laughs> like on the top of the shelf? Yeah, and like, then the hey, whole bro. weight. Oops. <laughs> All right. Oops, sorry. All right, let's, <laughs> let's see. Hang from it? Sure. Don't hurt yourself. Wow. Oh no, that's gonna give. Oh, it gave? Should I? Put my weight on it? Don't fall, but I yeah. I won't fall. Oh shit. Well, we broke it. We broke it. All right. Oh, look at that. Carbon. Oh my God. It's like shards, like razor shards. Yeah, definitely. We're gonna put that in the garbage. My days. I'm tempted to touch those. Yeah, <laughs> don't. There it is, delaminating here. Yeah. Breaking the actual fibers is not easy. No, it just took 220 pounds hanging from it on the what? Like that's like maybe three mil? Yeah, so it's, yeah, I think it's uh, three lines. Three lines? Three layers, three um, walls. If it was a little lighter, if I was lighter, I feel like it would have yeah. actually held up. Can I snap it here? Sure. Amazing. So that was pretty wild. That print had um, two outer perimeters and maybe like 10 layers tall. So not a ton of carbon fiber. I think it was like 40 meters in total. So pretty impressed with that little piece holding on to so much weight. And a huge shout out to Kamal. Thanks for sending me home with some engineering grade filaments. We got some PPACF, some polycarbonate, some nylon, and then I have some TPU and some PLA and PETG, of course, and uh, a couple other random alloys. But let me know in the comments what type of filament you want me to try print with the Fiber Seeker. I've talked to the engineering team over there, and the slicer doesn't currently have all the profiles set up, so they're going to slice them for me. Um, but that'll be a feature available in the new version of the software. So what's the problems with this printer? Let's get into it. The negatives. Well, the first thing is pretty obvious. You've got this massive printer with two spools on the back. So if you're not in like an industrial warehouse with tons of space and you're in a small space like me, spinning this means you need a lot more space. And then when you spin it, this, this section is where the power supply is. So when you spin it, you end up taking this off and you have to remember to move your hands up here every time. Little thing, you know, not that big a deal. For me personally, I will most likely end up making some sort of rig, obviously not a V-spooler, but some sort of mount for the filament so that I can just wire it from the side with like a long PTFE tube or something like that. So there will be a solution for that. Um, just unfortunate that they're in the back. The second is the unique dual nozzle system. It is where the magic happens, yes, but it also means that there's gonna be less replacement parts because it is so unique. I did get one fiber clog while I was printing, well actually while I was messing around changing things and testing things, um, not during a print, and it was pretty easy to um, pull all the splintered pieces of fiber out. So that's okay, but it's kind of more of just like an unknown thing, so that's why it's on the list. Thirdly, we've got one smooth PEI plate, which I had to use glue on to get good adhesion. That's what they recommend as well. So I'd love to see it come with a textured build plate on the Kickstarter, that would be cool. Just so that we can get a bit better build plate adhesion. A little thing is you have to reach all the way around to turn the power on and off, which I'm doing constantly because the printer's kind of loud. You can hear that right away. 
it's the motherboard fan and it's on constantly so even before the print starts and even after the print's done if you leave for the night and let it finish this fan is just going to keep going 24 7. I'd love to see the ability to turn that off. It's surprisingly loud, which has me reaching all the way back here to turn it on and off more often than I would like to. I did notice some unnecessary oozing coming out of the second nozzle. A lot of that can be software fixed, but the one thing I was surprised to see missing in this printer is a cover for the nozzle like the H2D has. That would have been a nice addition, but um, definitely not something necessary once you dial in the software to make sure that there's no oozing. Speaking of the software, I can see it going either way. When they launch Aura 3, it could be a really nicely refined, awesome slicer, or it might still need some work. Um, as of right now though, it does do everything it says it can. It's just missing a lot of profiles and missing some testing and experimentation on what filaments work best. So it's very likely that they'll fix a lot of that by the time the Kickstarter's done, and I'll be doing some of my own testing to try out some more high-grade filaments, which I'm quite excited to do. So that's been my experience with the FiberSeq. Overall, I'm impressed with the machine. Excited to see where it goes from here. I'm gonna try out the engineering filaments, and I'm gonna reprint my tripod collar and see if we can turn that into a uh, product we can sell. Um, let me know if there's anything else you want to see me try out with this machine and uh, see you guys in the next one.